How's everybody doing today? Good? All right. Well, I, I went kayaking yesterday with a group of people and survived, right? Ken? Barely. It's some had a little hairy situations, but uh, he survived. Hey, have you ever wondered what, what is valuable to you? you, ever, you have, have you ever taken time to think about what are the most valuable things in your life? When, uh, when our kids were young, when they were little, we, uh, we've always had a lot of people over our house. So we've always had a lot of kids over our house because we had couples and friends that had kids. And, and uh, we've tried to teach our kids to share, you know. Isn't that interesting, those of you with, parent, or with kids, those parents here? Uh, so we try to teach our kids to share. And, you know, there's always that mine, mine, you know, and the biting and the, you know, all that. So we're like, no, we're going to share. And, and we realized something while we were teaching our kids how to share is that there really are some things that the kids have that are special, you know. And, and it's always like the, the, the kid that comes to visit always wants to touch the special toy, you know. It's like, and they don't want to just touch it. They want to destroy it. And so we learn, you know, right away, okay, We'll allow you to have those special things. So we put those in a, in a special place and teach them. But um, I, I, I was thinking about that this morning, you know, as I was thinking about what it is that is valuable to us, you know. And I was, I was just asking myself that question. What, what, did it, what is it that's, that I would say is valuable? You know, I don't know if you thought about it much. For some, it might be your phone, right? Now, my wife thinks that my phone is the most valuable thing to me. It's really not. It's not if you're listening, wherever you are, babe. Yeah. My computer is not the most important thing to me. Not even my Harley. It's not the most important thing. You know, for me, my, the most important thing is my family. It's my wife. It's my kids. It's that family unit, you know. It's that, that, that's what I would die for, you know. And, uh, and I, you know, maybe, maybe you'd say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what's, that's what's important. But uh, what is it that we invest the most in? And, and how do we, you know, I think the value that we place on things can be proven by the time, the energy, the, the, the whatever we do for that thing. You know, whether it's our family or our marriage or, or stuff, you know. Maybe for some it's, a, you know, a car or a house or, you know, whatever uh, material thing it might be. But... Uh, Jesus said it like this. He, he, he said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth, moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, does anybody know what the rest of it is? There your heart will be also. For wherever your treasure is, whatever you value, that thing that is most important, that's where your heart is. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we can value things, uh, the wrong things. And we can easily slip into placing so much importance, whether it is your cell phone or your computer or, or a, a car, a bike, or a house, or a thing, you know. Sometimes if we're not careful, we kind, of, we kind of slip into investing so much time and energy and, and our heart becomes captivated by stuff, right? Has it ever happened in your life? It's happened in mine. And one of the things that God does and he uses to help us remember what is the most important thing in our lives is something that we want to talk about today. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about giving and the importance of giving and, and how what giving does in our heart. Here's the thing, you know, I tend to filter everything through this filter of, you know, you can, you can look at Scripture and you can say, we need to obey Scripture. Or you can look at Scripture or the Bible and you can say, we need to submit to it. Okay, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, the difference between obedience and submission. Obedience is something you can do, but your heart's not engaged in it, right? It's kind of like on the outside, I'm doing the right thing, but on the inside, you know, I'm still doing my thing. And when I get a chance to do my thing, I'm going to do it. Submission is different. Submission is a, it's an attitude of your heart. Of course, you're doing the right thing on the outside, but on the inside, 
there's, um, you know, you're doing the right thing as well. And I like to filter Scripture, God's Word, through that. You know, the Old Testament, was, there was a lot of emphasis on obedience, you know, obeying the law. And, and, but I think what Jesus came to do, among many things, is, is to, in bringing us back into relationship with the Father, he wanted to connect with our heart. He wanted to connect our hearts, our lives, back to God. And so our relationship with the Father is one of submission, that I willingly come under your authority, God. I willingly come under it because I know you want the best for me, right? That's, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, how, you know, that's our goal in parenting. We want our kids to reach that point where they get it. They understand, mom and dad really want the best for me, so I will willingly submit to your rules. So I like to filter God's word through that, and I, I like to look at scripture, and when I see things that are commands, which there are still commands, I like to look at it instead of just saying, okay, well, I'll do it on the outside, but I really don't know why I'm doing it, but on the inside, I'm doing my own thing. You know, and I think a lot of Christians do that. They, they, they on the outside, they do the right thing, but on the inside, maybe they don't understand why they do it, and maybe they really don't want to do it, but they're going to do it. You know, you get the point, right? And so we've talked about giving and how giving changes our heart. Yes, there's commands in Scripture. Yes, of course, you know. But what is God doing through that? He's changing our heart because now we're putting him first. Now our worship, giving is, a, is really about worship. It's about the things that we, we uh, how we place value on on money and what money can purchase and all of that, and, and it's about putting him first. And today I want to talk about reaching, and what, it, what it is about reaching. You know, uh, maybe you've been in church long enough and you've heard the, um, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I might have misquoted that a little bit, but anyway, you get the point. The Great Commission, we're supposed to go into all the world, every missionary, that is like the driving force of, of every missionary, should be the driving force of every believer, but it's to, to go, and, and that's the command. But why? Do we just do it because it's a command, or do we take the time to understand what is it that God's trying to accomplish in our hearts, in our relationship with him? What's he fixing? Because our hearts are twisted, our hearts are broken because of the fall, because of sin. What's he trying to fix in us? I think what he's trying to fix in us, he's trying to change our hearts when it comes to reaching and why we emphasize reaching is one of our core values. Why do we talk about it? Is it because we want more people in here? We want to fill this place up? No, it's really, it's not about that. It's not about getting more people in the seats it's not about having numbers on a page or names on a page. What is it about reaching that is so important to us? First of all, it changes our hearts. Here's something I think that happens with reaching. And uh, I never really thought about it too much. You know, as I was a missionary, I still actually still considered a U.S. missionary with church planting. But, you know, I was a missionary in Central Europe and... and uh, you know, the Great Commission, that was, you know, Matthew 28 was important to me. As a youth pastor, I was, uh, it was important to me. But I never really thought about what it does inside my heart, what it changes. Here's what I think happens when you and I, every one of us, when we reach out to someone who needs Jesus, is that it aligns my heart, it aligns your heart, it aligns our hearts with the Father's heart. Because what is important to God? Does he care about your house? I mean, yes, he cares about the things that touch our lives, but does he care about material things? Because he could recreate everything. It's not, it's not that it's, you know, what's, what's most important to him? People, right? That's what's most important to God, is people. You your neighbor, your coworker, your uncle, your brother, your wife, your husband, your kids. 
He cares about people. The most important thing to God is people. Why do, you, why do I say that? Why do I think that? Well, why did Jesus come? He came to bring us back into relationship with the Father, right? So the most important thing to God is people. And what happens when you and I reach out, when we, you, you know, we, we have names for it. There, there's biblical terms, evangelism, right? Missions, all that stuff. When we reach out, though, and we're, we're reaching people who need Jesus, and we're doing something to bring them, we call it bringing them to life, something changes inside of my heart. Because all of a sudden, my heart is aligning with the Father's heart because what's important to God now becomes important to me. So much so that I will give financially, so much so that I will give of my time, I will go. Those of you who've been on missions trips, been to Honduras this last year, you know, you work hard, you do. Why? Because what God values now becomes what I value. And I believe that's what happens when we reach out. It reminds me constantly that people are his priority. Because, again, we can, get, we can get sucked into just the busyness of life, right? I live in the same world you do, and it's fast-paced. It's hectic. There's so many demands, this and that. You know, this week it was like, ah, you know, so many different stupid. Have you ever spent time in the DMV? Yeah, I had an experience this week. Between paying taxes on property taxes on your vehicle and then going, I, I could get on my soapbox. Man, four hours later, shouldn't have taken that long. Ah, now, I know why people snap now. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I'm not justifying it, but yeah. But life can get busy, it can get hectic, it can get crazy, and, and because of that, we can get sucked into valuing things that are not really valuable to God. And so I think reaching is so important. Is it a command? Absolutely. The Great Commission, the, the last thing Jesus said before he left this earth is go into all the world. It is a command, but, but it's not something we just do out of obedience. That's like, well, I really don't know why I'm doing it, but I'll do it. But when our heart gets engaged and we understand, wow, my heart is aligning with the Father's heart and what's valuable to him is now valuable to me and important to me. Totally different motivation. Totally different thing that happens. And so we talk about reaching and today uh, we've got some guests that are with us that are some of our missionaries. We just started supporting them but we've, got, we've known them for a while. But I wanna share some things before they come up and we're gonna do a little interview thing. Uh, I want to share some things that we're doing as a church because maybe a lot of you don't know really what, what we're doing as a church. You know, you're just like, hey, I'm here. You know, I'm at Vive. We as a church are doing some great things in our community. When we talk about reaching, we're not just talking. It's not just, you know, talk. But we really are doing something. Last year, in June, we launched our Dirty Little Secrets book. In January of 2014, we started the process to, to get our story into our community, to let people know what's going on at Vive Church, what's going on in people's lives here at Vive Church, because I believe our story is a key that opens prison doors for people, emotional, spiritual prisons that people are in. And so there were a lot of you, about 70, 80 people that, that said, hey, I'll share my story. And seven of those stories went into the book. And some of you know, this, know the story, know about it. But we launched Dirty Little Secrets. Not a title of a book that necessarily would make it on the top Christian bestseller. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's not something that most Christians would say, ooh, I hope that most Christians wouldn't be like. But it wasn't geared to Christians. It wasn't one more thing for the Christian community, it was to reach people who were away from God. And so we wanted a title that would, you know, somebody who's not close to God, they're going to be interested in a dirty little secret, right? You were, I was. 
right? Hopefully you're not anymore, but anyway. So we, we launched the book in June. And, in, and what happened from that launch when Good Catch Publishing came and is that many of you said, hey, I will support that book. I will sponsor books to get mailed out in our community because we want to target our neighborhood. If we're not reaching our neighborhood, what are we doing? You know, what, what are we doing here? And so our first target, our first place that we wanted to reach was our neighbors as a church. And so I think they're ready. We started out last year with, um, or in 2014, uh, almost 1,100 books got mailed out. They were direct mailed into neighborhoods here around Vive Church in the community. And then for three months after, they received a postcard. Some of you may have received it. I actually got one at my house, you know. Um, I passed the book on. I, I've already read it many times. But So uh, you, get a, you get a book, then you get a postcard for three months. So 1,100, almost 1,100 homes in 2014. Then in 2015, we, uh, we've had so far 762 books that have gotten mailed out. So a total so far that have been mailed out around Vive Church. These aren't just gory stories. These are stories of people's lives who've been ch changed, transformed, how they were away from God, how they invited God into their lives, how they began a relationship with him through Christ. It was a story of redemption. And so about 1,800, well, a little over 1,800 books so far have got, you can see the homes. These are, these are real homes, real people received a copy of the book. Maybe you've gotten a book as well. 1,800 in the last, um, really a little over a year now. That's amazing. You know, uh, we have new guests that come to Vive. Uh, we have about 500 on the average every year of new guests, people that come to Vive. And um, that's every year who get a chance to hear God's word. If this is your first time to Vive, you're one of our new guests. And, and so they get to hear the word of God. They get to experience the presence of God. But that's 500 people a year. Through the book, we've already been able to reach about 1,800 people with seven stories of people whose lives have been changed by God's power. And the rest of this year, we're actually slated. We've got some more book, extra books that have been sponsored. Um, we're, we're looking at another 700 at least by the end of the year, which would, uh, would take us to a couple thousand, 20, almost 2,500 books. That's, that's awesome. I mean, 2,500 homes that are being impacted and influenced with the gospel, with a message of hope and life. So we're not just talking about reaching people, but some of you are sponsoring books. You're putting kind of in a sense your, your money where your mouth is. You're valuing the thing that God values most, and that's people who are away from him. But what if, what if people don't want to hear about Jesus? Should we just kind of like, well, burn then, you know? Maybe there was a time in your life where you weren't real interested in Jesus either. I know there was for me. We don't give up on people because they're not interested in Jesus. People are valuable to God. He doesn't just value his, you know, his, you know, the people that are in churches on Sunday morning. You get that, right? He values every one of us. We could go on and on why he values us, but we are important. And that's why the that's why the devil fights us so hard and wants to destroy us so so desperately because we are so valuable to the Father. So we've got this thing going on that's always happening. Every month books are getting mailed out. People are sponsoring. They're they're sponsoring books. Maybe you didn't realize that. There are people that are sitting here this morning that every month automatically money gets withdrawn from their accounts or their credit card or whatever. They're, they're sponsoring books to get mailed out around the neighborhood, and they're impacting people's lives. They're saying, you know what? What God values, I value. And the truth is, when we stand before God, 
and we, the treasures that we've stored up, it's not going to be our iPhone. It's not going to be our, our Samsungs. It's not going to be our possessions, right? The treasure we store up in heaven are people. And so this is what we're doing. Here, here's why I wanted to, one of the reasons I want, I wanted to let you know what's going on at Vive, that we're reaching people. But I also want to give you an opportunity to sponsor books because some of you have been a part of Vive since we launched that. It's still going on and we can still impact many, many lives. I mean, you can kind of see with already about almost 2,000 homes, look how many other homes, I don't know if you can, well, it's not up there, but how many other homes are in the community? There are tens of thousands of houses within just a few mile radius of this church that we can impact with the gospel. So here's how you can participate. You can go onto the website, vivechurch.com. Right under the main slider image is another little tab. Right next to the Better Together is a picture of the book. And here, here's how you can sponsor it. You click on that. It'll take you to a link. And you can, you can sponsor one book. You can sponsor five books, ten books, whatever. Um, but you can participate. You can be involved. Because, you know, most people don't have the, the knowledge or the confidence, the courage, whatever you want to call it, to just go door to door. I mean, if I said, hey, we're going to meet this afternoon, we're going to go door to door and tell people about Jesus, I'll be the only one here probably, right? <laughs> Somebody would be like, I'll go with you, Pastor. Thank you. I love you too. But most would be like, have fun. But I don't have to go door to door. I can sponsor a book, and I do. So every, every month, I, I kind of go door to door and um, sponsor books. And you can do the same thing. So you go on the website, you can do that. Also, another thing that we do is uh, our missions trip. So we take people around the world, you know. Well, Honduras, it's not around the world, but it's, it's not America, right? Um, and so over the, we've, we've done two trips so far. Last year we had about 40 people almost that, that have gone on our trips to Honduras. And uh, we've got other trips that are coming up. Again, you can participate by reaching people. That's what's most important to God. If you'd like to be a part of the missions trips, you can go on the website. Again, and there's, there's a, a link that says Mission Honduras 2016. It'll give you the dates. Um, February 29th through March 7th. July 25th through August 1st. Two different trips that we're going to be taking next year. And you can sign up for that. And then coming up um, in October... Real quick, I just want to put this plug out there. And it sounds like it's announcements time, but uh, it's really not. These are things that we're doing to reach people. Is uh, on October 10th, it's a Saturday, and Vive Church turns five years old. And uh, yeah, we're growing up. Uh, I think we're all, is that kindergarten? We're in kindergarten now. Woo, man. Um, but you know, I thought, what, what better way to celebrate our birthday than to reach our community, do something to bless our community? So we are going to take that day, and here we're going we're gonna to be reaching out to our teachers. We're going to be reaching out to our first responders. We're going to be reaching out to some business owners, and we are going to bless this community in a big way. And, uh, and you'll hear more about it in the future, but that's on October 10th. It's a Saturday. And our goal is to have 200 people volunteering that day. 200 people that are they're saying, hey, I'll be a part of this. Children, there's something for kids to do, something for everyone. And uh, we want to we log at least 1,000 volunteer hours in one day of, as a church of just blessing our community. I think we can do it if you'll participate. If it's just me, I can't do it. There's not 1,000 hours in a day. All right. So these are some things that we're doing as a church. Why do we do this stuff? We do it because our hearts are aligned with the Father's heart. What he values, what is important to God, is important to us. We're not here just for us. We're not here just to have this, you know, a Christian club kind of a thing going on and just to feel good. Although feeling good is great. I love feeling good. But there are people who are away from God. I still remember being away from God. I still remember what it was like to not be in a relationship with Jesus. 
And there are a lot of people who need him. Maybe some of them up front don't act like they want him. But it's amazing what happens when they encounter him. Their lives are changed. And you know what I'm talking about because many of you have experienced that. So I want to invite Jay and Nancy to come up. Join me up here. I got to need a microphone. Let me grab the mic. Who's the talker? Oh, that's <laughs> right. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh, yeah, go ahead and sit right there. All right. So J- let me give you a little intro. Jay and Nancy, is it hot in here to y'all? Yeah, can someone turn the air on, man? Maybe it's the par lights cooking us up here like chicken at uh, Roadhouse or whatever. I don't know. So Jay and Nancy are some of our newest missionaries we've started supporting. And they are missionaries over all of Central Europe. But let me give you a little back history. I said that this morning in our leaders meeting too. Central America. I was a missionary in Central Europe. Yeah. So, all right, Central America. I know my geography. I really do. So, Central America. And uh, let me give you a little backstory, though, of how well, I've known Jay and Nancy for a long time. I was a youth pastor here in South Carolina when you guys first went out as missionaries. I remember that long. 12, right? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, dinosaurs were roaming the earth still. But um, anyway, uh, they've, been, they've been missionaries for some time. And, uh, but their son, Parker, And their daughter-in-law were actually a part of Vive Church in the very beginning. Some of you might remember Parker and Amy. And and they really helped us. They were actually in our living room in October of 2009 when uh, he was playing guitar and singing. And there were just uh, maybe six or eight of us counting my kids. And we, we, we actually prayed and said, okay, Lord, here it is. We commit ourselves to start this church. And so that was kind of the birth for of the us, church. For us, thank you for reaching out to them. Because, as you know, it was, a, it was a difficult time in their life right then. And um, I think that was the DNA of this church, is that uh, we don't cast people aside. When people are hurting, yeah. we reach out. And, and, and so we thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Well, we enjoyed it. So we love them. But I, I, these guys are missionaries. They've been in, in the trenches for a long time. And uh, uh, Belize... You started out in Belize. Belize. And so give us a little story, a little history of of your journey as missionaries. And and then I've got a few other questions. Well, we've been doing this. He kept saying a long time. It has been 20 years we've been on the field. We started in Belize. We were there for eight years. And we felt we felt like that, you know, God had called us there. We'd be there forever. We involved in past. What's that? We knew he called us there. <laughs> yeah. And if you've ever been to Belize, uh, you'll understand. But we love the people. And, and one of our, our projects that we were involved in there was a, a high school that was reaching kids that weren't, uh, didn't have hope. There were one, we, in fact, we called the high school New Hope High School. And the whole process of getting that going, and, you know, we heard from God. But sometimes when we think when God speaks to you, it's going to happen immediately. We learned through that process that sometimes. God gives you a vision. It takes a, a while for it to happen. But we were involved in that ministry. And finally, it's going to come. We we're really loving it. And then God had the nerve come speak to us and said, um, would you go to Costa Rica? And I was like, no, we're quite content where we are. And, um, and the, our leaders said, we would really like for you to consider it. And um, so we prayed about it, and God moved us to Costa Rica. And while we were there, the first Years we were there, we were directing the language school. All missionaries going to Latin America have to learn Spanish or learn to attempt to learn Spanish in the missionary formation. So we were directors of the language school for five years, and then we got a call from our leaders again. And this is very interesting. They, they called and said, well, congratulations. We're going, okay, what would that be for? Well, your colleagues have just voted you in to be the area director for Central America. And I said, we didn't put our name in that hat. You know, that's like... <laughs> Um, so that's kind of through leadership, through, you know, God calling, uh, we've been serving as area pastors for the past, and we're in eight years now, and we have missionaries in the seven countries of Central America, and one of our heart, obviously, is Honduras, because that's part of our, uh, that's part of our, our group, we have 110 missionaries throughout the seven countries, and we get to pastor them and walk with them through the good times, um, victories, Walk with them through bad times. This weekend we're dealing with 
a missionary who had a brain hemorrhage on. So I can call and we've been whether to see if we can get air vac out, but the whole process and seeing how God's moving in that situation. But as as pastor, uh, you pastor lots of people, not just the ones sitting here, but around. And so that's our role. I, I, you know, Nancy, don't, our role is, is pastor and missionary. Yeah. So I, I, I'm curious. I remember your kids being young. You got three. Mm-hmm. And uh, so here, 20 years ago, you loaded up your kids. Yeah, yeah. How old were your kids? You and Charles can help me with the sausage. Hold that up real close. It's got something that cuts out if it gets Okay, wrong. our kids at that time when we went out, when we were when we applied to be missionaries were eighteen and twelve and we got to the field, they were um, 10, 12, and fourteen. Wow. How many of you would haul your kids off to you know, especially take them away from your grandparents? That's rough, right? Probably had death threats from your yeah, my mom exactly. said she would let us go, but she, you know, I mean, she, we could leave, but the kids would stay with her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the sacrifices we make as missionaries, there's a lot that we do, and we do that. Obviously, it's not the pay, you know, the pay's not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the pay's not that great, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a sacrifice, but we do it because that's what's valuable to God. Yeah, you know, you know the passion, uh, one of the people I met in your church this morning, Kim, and the first thing she started talking about is the area of ministry that she's involved in. It's this passion. It's the, it's the call that drives us. Um, you know, we can sit home, um, but it's like Jeremiah talks about the fire burning in you. You know, why do you do what you do? You know, you, you can go do something else, but it's like. Oh, for me, it's the pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. No, but it is. It's, <laughs> if you're visiting for the first time, that is a joke. Uh, <laughs> The pay is not that great. All right. You know, I, we, we talk about the need. You talk about the Father's heart. I'm just so in tune with what you're saying. What we do is because we get in touch with the Father's heart. And when we can talk about really good things that are happening around the world because, I mean, it, people are coming to know Jesus. It's exciting. The, the I'm, I'm statistics, like every 25 seconds, somebody comes to the Lord. Just in our fellowship of Assembly of God around the world, and then every 45 minutes, a new church is founded. That's exciting. But you can't get, I mean, you're overwhelmed by the unmet need because they talk about the, the lines of people with names who've never heard about Jesus. You know, the line would go, if you made a line of people from the platform here to the moon, that would be people who've never heard Jesus' name, but that line would come back. I mean, we're, I'm, I'm, overwhelmed with the huge need and one time we were walking through a, a, a train a plane and an airport that's what it's called an idle puerto yeah. and um and it was like god said when all god's people are doing all that god says then all the world will be reached now my passion our passion our heart is central america is latin america want to see but we realize we're, it's a partnership. It's, 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 you know, it's not just that part of the world. There are a billion uh, Muslims who've never heard about Jesus, and they're facing death and eternity. So we've got to, to realize that each of us doing what God has called us to do, and then all the world will be reached. Every church, every person doing what God says. So the passion, the, the need is huge. It's overwhelming. But what is God telling me to do? So when I meet people like in your church who, first thing they say is, this is what God... In our, I think that's I think that's the plan. Yeah, it's good. Well, what's your greatest need as missionaries? Because uh, we want to be able to help you. And that the second question is, how can somebody partner with you? Because there are a lot of people who would never do what you're doing, but they want to be able to help you. Because I realize, as a missionary too, and you already said it, it's not. It, it is a partnership, you know, because you can only do what you can do because you have people partnering with you. Well, everything we do uh, is an extension of this church's ministry because you're partnering with us. Um, uh, those who've been to Honduras, you've seen the huge need of children, and that's throughout Central America. Um, ten-year-olds are being, ten-year-old boys and girls, ten-year-olds are being recruited to become parts of gangs because if they kill somebody, they won't be prosecuted. So when we lose a ten-year-old, we lose them for life. So it's not just reaching them, it's discipling them. 
And if you start hearing the stories around what's going on, we're desperate for workers also for material to help to disciple kids. So when somebody comes and says, come join a part of this, and they say, no, I, my identity is in Christ. And so if it's okay, one of our programs um, that we're really involved in is in Costa Rica, and it's, it's a, we had a huge problem with girls who were being abused. We started a, one of our missionaries, and we're partnering with her, started a program called Chicas de Promesa. It's Girls of Promise. It's an empowerment, and, and we're, we've seen the results of this program that now girls, I mean, it was, it was the point where three times a week they were having to report to the police of girls were either being abused or raped. Three times. That's 150 cases a year just in this one school. Well, since the program started, that's gone from three to zero. Now, the girls are not being abused in that community. And so, we don't want to just say, well, there's a, there's a huge need, but what are some answers? So, would it be okay if we showed this, yeah, this video that, that absolutely. shows this program? And this, this is what we want to expand throughout Central America. Las escuelas de la Fundación Piedad están ubicadas en zonas de alto riesgo social, donde hay pobreza y extrema pobreza, donde hay un porcentaje demasiado alto de hogares disfuncionales. Hace más o menos algunos años, en esta institución se dio una situación de mucho abuso, pero sobre todo el abuso de tipo sexual. Se me presentó un caso muy doloroso, muy doloroso, donde una niña era abusada por su propio papá. Por supuesto, fui, puse la denuncia. Eh, Mary Mahon vino ese día, seguro me notó algo y me preguntó qué le pasa. I, I remember coming up here to the school one day and I, I saw Coralia and, and she had had to go that day to report the third abuse among the girls in her school that week. And I remember her just expressing a sense of frustration. Um, this started a, a dialogue between the two of us, and then the Lord laid on our hearts this idea of a girls' empowerment club. Así nace Chicas de Promesa. Chicas de Promesa es un lugar, es como un programa que nos ayuda. En Chicas nos dan una enseñanza. Este, hacemos unas manualidades. A veces nos podemos vestir y a veces nos dan comida. ¿Y cuál parte es tu favorito? Eh, vestirnos. Sí, ¿Y cómo le gusta vestirte? Con un tutú morado, con unos lentes y con unos guantes. Aprendemos de que somos muy valiosas, de que Dios nos ama, de que nadie es menos importante que los demás y que todos nos debemos respetar. Yo pienso que este programa nos ayuda mucho porque así en nuestras vidas podemos ser fuertes y valientes cuando venga algún problema. Como cuando nuestros padres se divorcian o cuando algún familiar es drogadicto en nuestras casas. Um, the girls here are not at risk when their moms are at home. So at night, everything's fine. It's during the day, before and after school, when um, they're subject to, to abuse from, from different people, whether it be uncles or, or stepfathers or other young men in the community. Cuando se daba el abuso, eh, yo podría decir, si iba tres veces a la semana, ese porcentaje nos bajó a cero porque ya no he vuelto a ir. Entonces significa que, que la verdad es que Dios está haciendo una obra maravillosa. But we're seeing results in this ministry because the girls understand the value they have. They're feeling empowered and they're talking about the abuse. And for some reason, that's helping them not to fall into um, becoming victims as they did before. Creo que este programa nació en el corazón de Dios. Y yo le voy a decir por qué lo puedo decir. Por los cambios que hay. Es que son cambios radicales. Eh, chicas nos puede ayudar diciéndonos que todos nuestros sueños se pueden hacer realidad y ayudándonos en todo lo que se pueda hacer posible. Podemos compartir también con nuestras familias en el futuro. Si alguien está, está pasando con un, un problema, compartir lo que nos han enseñado 
decirles que todos somos valiosos y que siempre Dios va a estar con nosotros. We're wanting to start that a similar program like that throughout Central America because we're seeing that it, it works, that young lives. Those girls are on there, part of the program. We've seen them, and you hear their stories, what they've gone through. Some of them, their parents, not divorced. I mean, it's just awful things they shouldn't have experienced. But now, life change. Well, the young men in that same community said, what about us? And so what we're starting right now is a program called Chicos de Promesa. It's for young boys to be discipled. So they can, it'll be different, you know, boys adventure. They want to, you know, go kayaking or, or all, all the wild things. But finding their identity in Christ. Would you pray with us? Because we wanted to start Chicos in Costa Rica, but also throughout Central America. Because we feel that if we can't reach the boys before they're 10 years old, we're going to lose a generation. Well, we want to help Jay and Nancy, and, and um, there's several ways we can help them. I was, Robin and I were having dinner this week with um, an elderly lady, a uh, single lady, and, and um, she said, you know, I, I want to do more. I want to give. I want to, I'm like, you know, that's not why we came for dinner, <laughs> you know, but uh, she said, I want, I, there's so much I want to do and I want to give, but I don't have anything. And she lives basically on Social Security. And, and I said, uh, I won't tell you your name, but I, I said, you know what? Really, prayer is very important. I know we don't, we don't talk about it that much, unfortunately, but prayer is huge, you know? Uh, everybody has a part to play. And if you can pray for us, pray for what's going on, and you can, you can pray for the need. You can pray for the situation, you pray for open doors, so you may feel like, I don't have a whole lot to, you know, you can pray, and I know that sometimes the need seems so huge, like you talked about, it's so, there's just so much need, and like, how, do, how can we, how, you know, it's almost so big that you, you feel like not doing anything, you know, but there's something we can do, I don't, maybe you've heard the story about the kid who woke up early and was out on the, the beach throwing uh, starfish into the ocean because they had, for some reason, millions of them had washed up on the shore. And, and a guy jogging by says, what are you doing? He says, I'm saving starfish. He says, well, why? There's just so many. You're, you know, you, you, surely you can't do much, you know. He said, well, I just saved that one. <laughs> I just saved that, you know. That's right. That's and uh, we can do something, you know. It's not, it, just because the need is so huge doesn't mean we need to be paralyzed and just sit back and do nothing. Let's do something. You never know who you're going to impact, right. you know. Uh, so we can do something. We can pray and we can give. We can go, you know. So I don't know what it is that God's going to lay on your heart to do. But uh, this morning what we want to do, we, we've got to cut things short because we do have another service. Um, but uh, we want to help Jay and Nancy. And so we want to receive another offering. We've never done this. Actually, I don't think we've ever taken a second offering. Hey, it's the day of difference stuff going on. But uh, we want to bless them, and uh, there's always a financial need that missionaries have in their monthly budget, their, their different funds. that they, These guys travel an extreme amount of, you know, I mean, they, they travel a lot, okay? And they're, they're in all these different countries, pastoring all these missionaries, and so there's a lot of need. So we want to bless them this morning. We want to strengthen them, help them to do what God's calling them to do. And we want to partner with you. We've already started supporting them monthly, which, uh, you know, but I want to encourage you. You may say, you know what, I'd like to support them. Then great. We'd love for you to support them monthly. They're going to be out in the, uh, in the lobby, and you can just uh, get with them. They can give you a support form and, um, and just start supporting them. And uh, my only thing is don't quit supporting them after you one month, you know, because they count on it. But, uh, but yeah, support them. Pray for them. And uh, let's, let's help them do what God's called to do. Let's partner with them and be a part of what God's doing, not just in, in Honduras, but now all of Central America. We're kind of, in, we're kind of reaching beyond just our Honduran uh, reach. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, God, for the opportunities that we have. And, Lord, the need is great. We get that. But uh, you've also, God, you've given us something. You've given us something. And, and so today we want to use that to bless and encourage and strengthen uh, what you 
want to do in these, these countries and through these missionaries. And so, Father, we just we thank you, God. Take the gifts and multiply them, God. I pray that you'll bless the giver. I pray, Father, that, God, for those who may feel like I don't have a whole lot to give financially, God, would you put inside their heart, would you just deposit a burden, a passion, uh, a prayer for this couple and for our missionaries that are scattered throughout Central America. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us? And uh, we're going to worship the Lord. And Remember, reaching aligns our hearts with the Father's heart. What's important to Him is what's important to us. It should be important to us. Because here's the, here's the grim reality. When we die, somebody else is going to be driving our car. Somebody else is going to be living in our house. Somebody else is going to use our golf clubs. You know, you get the point. Somebody, our kids are going to be spending our retirement unless we can spend it first. But what we take to heaven, what we store up in heaven is people. That's, that's a, it's a worthwhile investment. Amen? Let's worship the Lord together and I'll be right back. With all that I am, I surrender. I lay everything at your feet. For all that you are, I surrender. Take my Take my life. Make it.
Guys, thank you for coming out today. I hope that today you are inspired to go out there and reach people for Jesus. I hope that you're inspired to be part of a church that values people, that we're willing to do whatever it takes to bring people to life. Amen? Amen. I want to invite you this week to be part of that. Engage this core value of reaching in your own personal life. On your seats, we have our brand new invite cards for our series starting next week, Coming Home. Better Together Coming Home. Grab the one on your seat. Grab a few more at the info table. Invite your friends, your family, your coworkers to church. That's one simple way of reaching people. All of us can say, hey, brother, come, come with me on Sunday morning. That's one simple way to engage this core value of reaching. I want to encourage you this week as well. Pray for Jay and Nancy. Pray for the other missionaries that we support. People are valuable to God. People are valuable to us. So go out there this week and make our mission, bringing people to life, your mission as well. Guys, have a wonderful afternoon. Have a great Labor Day. And we'll see you next week.